How's this gonna be a three-parter? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 16th episode of the show Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 171st episode overall titled There's No Business Like Snow Business Part 2. We start this episode right where we left off. Heather's definitely dead. There's no hope for her. Just kidding, she's fine somehow, and she's just hanging right there. Cat, Billy, and Tommy are trying to figure out how to help her. At the power chamber, Rocky, Tanya, and Adam are getting to know about RoboCupid, and Adam says how it's brutal that people are falling in love with machines. But then he apologizes to Alpha in like a funny little moment. They try to get in touch with the others, but they see on the viewing globe what's going on with this dumb bitch, Heather. In space, Mondo blames Clank for Tommy and Cat not falling to their deaths. He says he'll just send down RoboCupid to fight the other three. The three see that RoboCupid is now attacking, and they let Cat and Tommy know that they'll try to handle it as long as they can. Also, don't let your friend die, I guess. Whatever, it's morphin' time! Blue, green, and yellow show up, fighting off cogs before Adam takes on RoboCupid solo, but he's not doing too well. He uses a power punch technique to hit her back before he takes out his hatchets to hit her. Meanwhile, Heather is still hanging there. People are starting to crowd around them, and I feel like someone could be doing something. It's not like it's a very sharp slope. Kat says that they can't morph right now. Well, duh. I mean, what the hell are they going to do even if they do morph? Tommy makes a long rope out of everyone's jackets, and then he tosses it down, and Heather still can't reach it. My god, this girl. Then Tommy leans forward like another inch and then she grabs the jacket rope, getting pulled up to safety like a dead fish. I mean, girl, you could've used your feet a little. She's saved and Kat says how someone pulled out the markers. This must make Kat look terrible in Heather's eyes because it sounds like Kat did nothing about this and just knew. Tommy and Kat then rush off and it's morphin' time. Red and Pink join the others and RoboCupid fires at them so they just call out the Zeozords? This monster isn't even giant. Oh, never mind. Tommy's getting out the defender wheel from his Zord, and then he uses it to just kill RoboCupid. Alpha says that even though they defeated RoboCupid, her spells have yet to be broken. Why? That's not typical. Clank and Orbis show up, making RoboCupid giant, so the Rangers call their Zeozords. Again? Dude, we just did this. Maybe they need to start storing the defender wheel somewhere else because this is repetitive. The Rangers form the Megazord in the absolutely most drawn out sequence ever, with each of them screaming about powering up their Zeonizer crystals. We're halfway through this episode and pretty much one thing has happened. I mean, not gonna lie, that's almost impressive. They fight RoboCupid and it's not going so well, so Adam gets in front, putting on the green helmet, ramming against the monster. Then Tommy gets back in front and he uses the Zeo Sword Saber, killing RoboCupid. In space, the Machine Empire is mad because the Rangers won, so the spells are going to wear off. Cut to Bulk and Skull's spells wearing off. Then so does Ernie's and Stone's, clearly confused as to what happened. Mondo then sums up the last two episodes, saying how this has been most disappointing. Machina says that she has another monster to hit them before they can recover from this attack, and she plans to send down Defoliator. At the ski lodge, Heather's doing a signing, and Tommy talks about how many fans she has, and Billy and Cat kind of make fun of him because it's clear that Heather likes Tommy, which is creepy because he's in high school and she's definitely like a pro athlete. Mondo then tells Clank to use Defoliator to raise the heat up on the Rangers. We then hear on the radio how it's the middle of winter and everything is being weird because it's so damn hot. Rocky and Adam are sparring real hard with one another, and Tanya says how they're doing so great, and of course, they all talk about how it's been so incredibly hot in Angel Grove. In what, the last 30 minutes? In the mountains, Tommy and Heather are on one snowmobile while Billy and Kat are on another, and ugh, we're entering yet another drawn out montage of them just going downhill really mediocrely. Also, how much time do these damn kids have to do all this stuff in a single afternoon? Like, I need a nap just thinking about it. They get down to the bottom of the world's longest hill, and Billy and Kat decide they're going to head back, but Heather wants to show Tommy something, and Tommy agrees that there's some convincing from his friends. Billy and Kat leave in one direction while Tommy and Heather go in another. Tommy and Heather go off to a cliff, parking and getting off the snowmobile, looking over a gorge. She tells Tommy that she comes here to center herself when she competes. She then says that Kat and Billy told her something about Kimberly, which is super awkward and like uncalled for. And Tommy says, nothing lasts forever anyways, in like the most defeated tone. They then almost kiss, but instead they get on the snowmobile driving off. Tommy also notes how it's getting really hot for the middle of winter. I mean, it can't be that hot. None of the snow has melted. Mondo sees him going around and he promises more heat to come. Cat and Billy are at the lodge and Billy talks about how Heather is a really nice girl and he hopes that things will work out between Heather and Tommy. And Cat says, yeah, that'd be great. As long as Tommy is happy, that's all that matters. Zordon calls Billy, letting him know that he needs Cat, Billy, and Tommy to come to the power chamber right away, and then they meet up with Tommy and Heather. Heather invites him to come eat dinner with them and take in a really great snowboarding movie. I mean, Jesus, girl, we get it. You have one characteristic. Billy and Cat decline, telling Tommy they had to leave, and it's so awkward when Tommy tells her that they have to go and that maybe Heather should make other plans. 
leave Heather, who looks really sad that the dude who just got dumped doesn't want to spend the weekend elbow deep in her. To be continued. I cannot wait for this three-parter to be over. This is like watching season two all over again. And trust me, it's terrible. Like I already said, I could care less about Tommy missing Kimberly. And as we're seeing, they're clearly setting up Kat, who likes Tommy, but Tommy might like Heather, but also, who cares about Heather? This is a lot of teenage drama that means nothing to me in the grand scheme of things, and while I can appreciate what they're going for, it's not executed well at all. Like, this is really poor writing. Also, when I was complaining about Kat not having anything of note to her character, I didn't mean to make her have a love interest in Tommy. Like, come on! You know what would be really interesting? Reverse it all. Tommy's broken up with by Kimberly, and he's relieved because he's actually kind of had these feelings for Kat for a while. He attempts to pursue it, but Kat doesn't have feelings for him at all, so Tommy ends up getting rejected yet again. Kat feels bad for rejecting him, but she knows it's for the better, and they could just end the entire story with them realizing that they're better just as friends, and the moral of the story is that when you get your heart broken, don't leap into the first thing that comes your way. Take some time and let yourself feel sad because it's totally normal and healthy. But nope, instead we get a VR trooper trying to use Tommy's ponytail as a handlebar while freaking Kat is depressed about everything. It's just a bummer overall, and I hope that we can move past this story real fast because Zio was actually doing cool things up until this point, and now we're like stuck in mud. So how will this conclude? Find out next time, but until then, may the power protect you. Tommy and Heather go off of a... <laughs> go off of a cliff? Oh, I wish.